but as films became more more and more uh, successful, they became more and more expensive. And so any film that you see, when I first started making movies, my pr producer, a guy who taught me about movie making, said any movie can be made for any price. You can make the $100 million movie, dollar movie for $5 million. In fact, today with an iPhone, you can make it for 50 grand, and you can make the 50 grand movie for 100 million. So people are making comedies, which is two people standing in a stupid room talking to each other for $200 million. It doesn't make any sense. So what happens, because they have so much energy and so much money to distribute, what happens is it attracts parasites. <laughs>in LA still anyone that listened to the last few minutes is going wait a minute how is this guy in Hollywood in LA saying these things how can you make a living still how can you get gigs can you get can you walk into CAA and they're gonna still talk to you I mean how how has that been for you well as we used to say in Chicago I drove my car here I didn't come on a bus so uh, I've continued to have a pretty wonderful God-given career as a playwright. They're doing my plays all around the world. In fact, they got a play now on Broadway with Lawrence Fishburne and uh, Sam Rockwell and Darren Chris, an older play of mine called American Buffalo. And as far as getting hired in the movie business, I, you know, I'm too old to sit in a room with 12 guys named Jason. <laughs> you know my agent? They're all named Jason. <laughs> But how, but how about that? I mean, just living in LA right now, I mean, after two years of, of COVID and just the way, the, the whole industry has collapsed. I mean, that was one of the reasons, there were many reasons I left LA, yeah. but it was also that there was, it wasn't just the COVID craziness, everything, and the crime and the homelessness, okay, we could do all that. It was just that it felt that there was nothing cool about it anymore. Whatever, whatever was cool and creative about LA felt completely gone to me. Well, you know, cities grow for a reason. And when the reason is gone, they get repurposed. When I first, first worked in New York a million years ago, I was working in Greenwich Village, and anything south of Houston Street was a slum, mm -hmm. absolute slum. There were people who were squatters, who were artists and homeless people living in those um, lofts that used to be a manufacturing district. And eventually the city came in and said, okay, okay, you artists, you can live here forever. We caught 200 bucks a month you can rent. So I got friends whose grandchildren are living in lofts for 200 bucks a month that would sell for $30 million. Okay, so now what used to be lofts and manufacturing becomes artists. So as always, along with our brothers, the homeless, the Bohemians come in and repurpose a neighborhood. And because the Bohemians come in and repurpose a neighborhood, then the restaurants come, then the shops come. So now Soho becomes the prime shopping district on the East Coast. And people come from all over the world to shop in Soho. Gets repurposed, right? What happens then? Black Lives Matter and the, ra the, the, the rioters come in and say, fuck you. They, they clean everything out. And yep. what, does the, what does the New York police do about it? Nothing. Not much. Yeah. So what you see is what started off as an industry catering to the shipping trade in New York, then became uh, abandoned, and then became squatter uh, a place for squatters, both the homeless and the artists, and then became a shopping district, and is now uh, going to, yet again going to become a slum. So this is the history of the world. So how do you liken that to LA? What do you think is going to happen to LA? And I do have to tell you that every time I mention California on my show gratuitously. I have to put $5 into this jar, and at the end of the year, I'm giving a couple thousand bucks away to someone who lives in California to move to Florida. So if you're looking to move, I might have a couple, couple thousand for you. What do you think's gonna happen to LA? Well, first I wanna say about Miami is I used to go to Miami all the time in the 50s with my dad who had business down there. We'd fly down there, and I'm still trying to get the zinc oxide out, out, out off my nose. <laughs> Yeah, there's, gonna, it's sunny, but it's all right. <laughs> What's going to happen to L.A.? It's happened to L.A. Here's the thing. Just as there's no, there's no business like no business, there's no 
when you do away with the theaters and you do away with the, the, the possibility of um, independent production, and there's no reason for the film industry anymore to be in L.A., I mean, they came out here because there was there was a sunshine and they made a bunch of crap every year. They made a bunch of crap on a couple of movies that were memorable and a couple of people s snuck through and made something beautiful and a couple of people snuck through and made a fortune. And sometimes the two people were the same and sometimes that they weren't. But be so that uh, in the industry grew up here first because it was sunny and second because they uh, they were fleeing the uh, Edison Company, which held the patents in New York. So the bootleggers came out here to make movies. So the studios, just like Soho, grew up around these bootleggers, right? And then they gave rise to this incredibly magnificent community. They had 5,000 people working as, as musicians and sent their kids to graduate school here, right? 10,000 people working as actors, all of the uh, professions and so forth were a middle class that supported the film industry. Mm -hmm. But as films became more, more and more uh, successful, they became more and more expensive. And so any film that you see, when I first started making movies, my pr producer, a guy who taught me about movie making, said any movie can be made for any price. You can make the $100 million movie dollar movie for $5 million. In fact, today with an iPhone, you can make it for 50 grand. And you can make the 50 grand movie for 100 million. So people are making comedies, which is two people standing in a stupid room talking to each other for $200 million. Does not make any sense? So what happens, because they have so much energy and so much money to distribute, what happens is it attracts parasites. They said, just like if you're rich, you say, well, I, I have a, a housekeeper. How about that? Oh, I'm more richer. I have two housekeepers. Oops. Got to keep an eye on them. I'm going to have a household manager. Oops, got to keep an eye on them because they have friends in the delivery. I'm going to get security. Oops, now I'm going to get a... So eventually, the superstructure brings down the ship, right? There's, there's more super... There's more, uh, uh, there's more restaurant critics than cooks mm -hmm. or um, customers. So there's no reason for the business to be here anymore. In fact, most of it isn't. But yet we have these huge, like you mentioned, CAA... Uh, people who, if they all went away, nothing would change in the movie business. But they they spawn other parasites, right? The agent gets a sub agent, and the sub agent gets a blah blah blah, and then people get a manager to deal with the agent. No one's ever exposed what a manager <laughs> told me what a manager does. So there's all of this superstructure, but there's uh, but who's working? If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about politics instead of nonstop yelling, check out our politics playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, watch our full episode playlist all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.